We're live from the show floor for Interbike TV, and we are with a cycling luminary. This is Gary Fisher. Gary, welcome. Thank you so much. Here we are in Vegas one more time. Why do we come here? It's the bike freaks. <laughs> <laughs> that, that may be true. And, and you, of course, remember when we used to go to Anaheim as well. Oh, yeah, and I remember even Long Beach before that in Anaheim. Yeah. And you, those shows are so small, you could see every bike in like an hour. You could talk to everyone there in three hours. The industry was tiny. Yeah. And nowadays, you know, there's so many good people bringing new ideas to the table, and there's a bike for everyone now. You know, there are all kinds of bikes these days. Yeah, you know, I, I was at the outdoor demo yesterday and I was looking at cross bikes and single speeds and fixies and commuters and 29ers. I mean, there's everything. Yeah, there's no one way that's best. Yeah. You know, it's there's a way that's best for you and there's a way that, you know, we can uh, cure your cycling issue, your need, whatever that be. So I, I, I got to ask, because you could really have your pick of, of anything. How many different bikes do you ride in, say, a two-week period? I ride about... About six bikes, <laughs> six favorites, you know, and it's like uh, I've got a, a town bike that's an elegant uh, old black bike. I've got a town bike that I call my sports car because it's a quick little bike to get around town with pretty skinny tires and everything. I've got a cargo bike to do all my shopping in town and bring the big stuff home. And then I've got a road bike and then I've got a cross bike and then I've got a hardtail mountain bike and a, a full squisher mountain bike. You know, and that's a pretty uh, fundamental collection, you know. they. <laughs> now, now, considering, say, the genesis of mountain biking and, and what bikes looked like then, and now we're looking at a lot of single-speed mountain bikes as well, what do you think of that trend? Well, the single-speed, it's, you know, back to this classic thing of simplicity, and they're insanely cheap, you know, and it is a issue. You know, people, they wear out their geared bikes too quickly, you know, and I complain to our are great suppliers and say, you know, you guys, you just like looking at the example of a racer that has a mechanic and will you please go pay attention to these guys that have abandoned their gearing and taken on a single speed and see if you can make things more robust. And I think that's, that's a uh, coming trend. You know, we have, you know, the types of bikes that are true rocket science. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I've shown some of our latest frame, you know, creations to a friend of mine that works at NASA and he says, I don't think we make anything this nice here. And you think about it, you know, the, the bikes that are being made these days, they're made in a way of an object made by NASA or Formula One. And you cannot own those objects, but you can own a really cool bike. So we got that end of the thing where you've got this absolute specialty piece that you can prepare for the, the very, you know, an event, a single event, and prepare quite correctly. And the opposite end of that is a bike that will do just about anything you need to do, and it'll do it all the time, every day, day after day, and that becomes more like what our car is. You just put in the key and you go. I gotta go somewhere, grab my bike, gone. You know, that whole style too. You know, and those things like, I had a friend that owns a bike shop and he showed me, this is pride and joy that he brought in, you know, had imported again from overseas. It was a tire pressure gauge. Now what was the attraction? No batteries, right? Back to that simplistic part. On the other hand, you know, we got the ultimate battery bike now, and the things are going off in Europe like crazy, and this is the electric assist bikes. And those bikes are truly incredible, and in that they're absolutely quiet, that you can pick one up and take it upstairs or lift it onto the rack, and the thing is a great equalizer. You get somebody out there that isn't quite as fast as you are, they get on that electric bike and they're there. You get like a kid that like, uh, uh, their parents, you know, they live at the top of a hill, you know, and everything. The kid has no excuses. It's uh, freeing up mom. We've got politicians now that are riding these bikes. Like in San Francisco, the, the, many of the supervisors on the board of supervisors are riding electric assist bikes, and they are in love with them because they say, this is absolutely bar none the fastest way for me to get around town, and I don't show up a sweat ball when I have to arrive in my suit and tie. So we are offering solutions. And indeed, you know, this industry makes the world's most efficient vehicles. Great point. And at Eurobike this year, and, and you were there in, in, you know, in spades, we, we read your tweets nonstop from Eurobike. And one of the trends this year really was electric bikes. Yeah. And I'm wondering, as much as it seems to have caught on in Europe, when do you think it's really going to catch fire here? 
I think people are, you know, they're gearing up like crazy. I mean, you know, you see guys like Stork making an electric bike. You see, like, I mean, we'll make, you know, 10 different models next year, you know, the Trek family and everything. And you see, you know, Ducati was out there with, you know, three versions. Ducati, you know, and they say, hey, don't take a photo. So I immediately Twittered it, you know. <laughs> but, you know, that, that brings up a good question. There's a lot of people who say an electric bike is, is really just an electric motorcycle, like an electric car. What do you say to that? Well, there is quite a difference. It is not an electric motorcycle and if you use an electric assist bike. And these are the bikes that, well, guess what? You still have to pedal. And these bikes now, they become absolutely silent as well, you know. So, I mean, I ride, I ride one around the city of San Francisco, and people are not aware I'm riding an electric bike very often. And, of course, they're capped out at around 20 miles an hour. But we as an industry are going to define it. And we need to, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm working with the politicians is because, you know, I want them to really understand what they're legislating for or against. And, you know, we have to use some wisdom here. I mean, we can't have, you know, 35, 40 mile an hour uh, bikes, so to speak, you know, speeding around on our bikeways. It's just not going to mix. So we have to look at what's going to be reasonable with these things and work with these things. That's a great point. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, when we think about the racing side of things, what, what sorts of changes have you seen in racing? Uh, I remember 20 years ago, uh, when the men were, were incredibly well followed, well, well paid, the women not so much. Now we're seeing women cycling magazines. What do you see as far as the changes in racing? Well, there's some fundamental changes, but you know, the women's side, that still has a long ways to go. I mean, there's been a tremendous amount of, well, inequity, so to speak, and you know, the prize lists, uh, you know, the salaries, all that sort of thing. Uh, women are um, very interesting to watch riding a bike. And the uh, <laughs> and that whole genre has you know really come up you know and it's got a long ways to go. It's gone a long, come a long ways. Still got a long ways to go, but uh, we're out supporting it. We've always uh, sponsored women racers, and we always will. Lastly, one of the things that I think you're known for is being a visionary. We've talked a little bit about um, some technology and about electric assist bikes. Look ten years into the future. What is the bicycle? of 2019 look like? Well, the bike is extremely fashionable. You know, it looks cool. It has, it's something that lasts a long time. And um, it's super light and um, it, it just functions the way you want it. And I, I see electronics, uh, more of a role of electronics. I see that because, you know, you just take like the fixie crowd, those kids, fixie kids. You know, one thing they do that I really appreciate they appreciate the masters of, you know, of the old Japanese, uh, the stuff that built, the guys that build the stuff for the Kirin racing. Stuff that, like, it's not the lightest, it's not the stiffest, but, man, it never breaks. And there's a whole group of young kids now in the United States and in Europe that, like, man, they worship that sort of uh, metallurgy, so to speak. And, you know, and, and I think, you know, this country in particular, the United States, people do not appreciate a well-made piece. They just look at it and they take it for a surface value. Well, now their kids really understanding what goes into this product, what it takes to make it function and last a long time. Real appreciators that are going to, you know, going to make these companies, you know, those companies are back online again, you know, producing a lot of product. And, you know, it's, it's really heartening to see people that do a good job or being, uh, you know, being paid for it. Gary Fisher, it's always good to talk to you. It's good to see you. Thank you for being a positive force in the world of cycling. Thank you. My pleasure. This is David from the Fredcast. We're live from the show for Interbike TV.